Hi, this is Mike Larson from Money and Markets TV. Football teams that use the same playbook year after year are virtually guaranteed to lose. Their opponents figure out what their game plan is, they adapt to it, and they shut them down. Yet for some reason, politicians around the world are using the same plays to combat the sovereign debt crisis that they used a few years ago to combat the private credit crisis. Worse, they're expecting different results, the very definition of insanity. Let's look at what's happening in Europe right now. Everyone knows that Greece can't afford the debt that it's been saddled with. Default is inevitable. For proof, just look at the fixed income markets. Greece's two-year note is yielding more than 30% versus less than 0.4% here in the U.S. But policymakers in Europe refuse to do the right thing and give Greece debt relief. Instead, they're forcing the government to push through another round of aggressive austerity measures in order to get any more financial aid. Or in other words, average Greek citizens are being asked to shoulder the burden of $112 billion in budget cuts, state asset sales, and higher taxes. Why? So the fat cat bankers in Paris and Frankfurt don't have to lose money on their high-risk loans and bond purchases. Talk about a Greek tragedy. But here's the thing. Bailing out Greece is going to do nothing to cure the underlying problem, that the country owes too much money to too many creditors given its growth and tax revenue outlook. All it'll do is kick the can down the road, and not very far either. So why would a second bailout following the same playbook do anything more? It won't. After a short-term bounce, Greece will resume its march down the field toward default, and the other pigs nations are likely to follow. I mean, the signs are on the wall already. Borrowing costs in Portugal, Ireland, Italy, and Spain have been moving steadily higher with two-year yields in Portugal more than quadrupling in the past year, and Ireland's yields almost quintupling. Now, as I said, Eurozone officials are using the same playbook to attack the crisis that politicians and policymakers used four years ago, and they're going to get similar results. And we can draw even more parallels between the two credit crises. In my opinion, Greece is very much like New Century Financial, the subprime lender that imploded in early 2007. That collapse sent ripples through the capital markets, but they were able to recover for a little while. Then later that year, mega lender American Home Mortgage tumbled into the abyss. Bear Stearns blew up a few months later, followed by Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, Countrywide, and Wachovia. Could Portugal, Belgium, and Ireland play those roles in this sovereign debt crisis? Ultimately, the private credit crisis didn't come to an end until Lehman Brothers and AIG collapsed in September of 2008. Similarly, I believe this public debt crisis will continue until Italy and Spain go under. And I'm recommending playing the markets now, just like I did three years ago. First, take profits off the table to pare down your stock exposure. Second, establish hedge positions to protect against a longer-term bear market phase. And third, get more aggressive with inverse ETFs on sharp, short-covering rallies. Then take those profits off the table when the next swoon strikes, because a mini bailout will inevitably follow. And that, in turn, will lead to the next short-term rally and the next inverse ETF opportunity. Things are going to play out this way because government policymakers keep kicking the can down the road and playing from the same worthless playbook they used a few years ago. So you have to take matters into your own hands. I'm Mike Larson for Money and Markets TV. Thanks for watching.